In this lesson, we'll take a look at autism. It is known today as a developmental disorder, and in fact, it is known to be a spectrum of disorders whereby an individual might be a high-functioning autistic individual uh, compared to somebody that is low-functioning. Nevertheless, as we'll see, uh, Dr. Uta Frith is going to argue that no matter where you are on the spectrum, there are some core deficits that characterize autism. And her presentation can be seen at this web link here, but I'll share some of what she presented and some other supplementary information as well. So the term autism can be traced back to the work of Leo Kanner back in the 40s, who made some of the first descriptions of children. Um, here is one of those descriptions. On a crowded beach, he, the autistic child, would walk straight toward his goal, irrespective of whether this involved walking over newspapers, hands, feet, or torsos, much to the discomfort of their owners. His mother was careful to point out that he did not intentionally deviate from his course in order to walk on others, but neither did he make the slightest attempt to avoid them. It was as if he did not distinguish people from things, or at least did not concern himself about the distinction. So, right away, from a quote like that, we can get the sense that people are not being processed in uh, a way that the typical developing child would process people. Uh, so, this will be one of the characteristics that we'll see uh, going forward. Now, in the 80s, uh, autism was understood to be a sort of a, a triad of impairments with... Um, Social learning deficits, so autistic kids, they lacked social interest, they rarely gossiped, they had reduced eye contact, Re uh, remember we saw that in psychopaths as well. Low engagement with peers, language delay, some don't really even achieve competence, so those would be low-functioning autistic individuals. High-functioning autistic individuals are the ones that generally do manage uh, uh, some uh, language competence, and it can be quite good. Um, poor social referencing, also in this category of social learning. Remember we talked about social referencing where we can learn uh, about the world by witnessing the reactions of others, right? And autistic children did not seem to have a well-developed capacity for social referencing. The second uh, impairment in, it was in the realm of imagination. They did not do much pretend play. And the third was the idea of these uh, repetitive behaviors, the routines and rituals and restricted interests. So there's the, you know, the child that would uh, spin the plate and just keep on spinning the plate and seem to be just intently focused on that particular uh, type of activity. If we look at, uh, back to the uh, language uh, delay, if we look at uh, autism compared to, say, Down syndrome or normal, typically developing children, um, you might have an autistic individual who's 12 who has the verbal mental age of 5, and that would be in the ballpark of, say, Down syndrome. Um, but again, there is a wide spectrum of language competence in autistic individuals, so hence the spectrum idea, the spectrum of uh, disorder, where some can be high-functioning. Now, Frith makes a point that, that, that autistic individuals are not always withdrawn from the social world. Uh, sometimes uh, that has been portrayed in media accounts and in movies where there's just a complete disconnection of the autistic child from, from all social engagement. Um, but nevertheless, that does uh, occur as a, as a symptom. Uh, he, she, she suggests that, that this withdrawal could be a secondary effect of poor o social understanding. So the idea here would be that the social withdrawal is not the principal feature of the, of the disorder. Rather, it's a, a difficulty in social understanding, and because the children have difficulty understanding other people, uh, people become less interesting and, or perhaps even aversive, and so then they withdraw. So withdrawal could be a secondary effect of poor social understanding. If you follow the movies, Hollywood uh, made uh, put sort of autism on the map with uh, Rain Man, 
And like other autistic individuals, he liked to be with other people. So in other words, that's a pro-social motivation. So that, that uh, the examples like Rayman would, would illustrate that you don't always get the withdrawal from the social world. Uh, he experienced a emotion, and there was a real guy who this character was, was uh, derived from, uh, and felt social rejection, felt social pain. So in other words, this is an individual who is having emotions, emotions that are related to connecting with others, um, but nevertheless, uh, he had a deficit. And what that deficit, Frith argues, is a competence in the reciprocal social interactions, right? The two brain processes. So this is uh, our first sort of a glimpse of where Frith is going to go here in understanding what is the primary deficit in the autistic mind. It is those uh, capacities that are related to the reciprocal social interactions. It's not just that the autistic individuals are withdrawn from the social world. Uh, they can have, uh, they, they can uh, want to be with others and experience emotions, but they're not competent in dealing with uh, some of these social interactions.